Over the last 10 years, development in Formula 1 has been rapid. The cars have become more technical and there's all sorts of innovative ideas that the teams use to gain an advantage. The advances to the steering wheel are no different. The steering wheel has come a long way since its first designs and nowadays it's used for more than just directing the car and it has all sorts of interesting features. George Russell uses a fairly basic steering wheel at Williams compared to the other teams, but on his outing at Mercedes it was something he had to adapt to. But how does a steering wheel work and what features do they have? As an example we've taken the RB16 steering wheel of Max Verstappen and Alex Albon. You see a lot of different buttons and they all have different functions. At first it may look a little bit complicated, but by the end of this video hopefully you'll understand all the functions of the RB16 steering wheel. One of the most important options on the steering wheel is of course the gear shift flippers, which are attached to the back of the steering wheel. The advantage of the F1 shifters is that you can shift in two ways, a tap towards you or a tap away from you. This is very advantageous to the drivers when they have to shift down at a sharp turn. The clutch is also on the back of the steering wheel. The dual clutch system is ideal for the start as you can just adjust the one side of the clutch. The radio button is red with the word radio on it so it's hard to miss. It's indispensable in modern Formula 1. When the button is pressed a red light appears above it and you know that you are in contact with your engineer. Under the radio button we see a blue button with BB- and on the right side of the steering wheel you can see the same with BB+. This is for the brake balance. A tap on the plus means more braking on the front wheels for harder braking zones and a tap on the minus means more pressure on the rear wheels for twisty sectors or to reduce understeer. The fuel burn button changes what fuel setting the drivers are using. Think about saving gas or burning it quickly. It's vital for the current set of cars. The tyres part of the steering wheel allows the drivers to disguise their strategy from other teams. This allows a driver to let his team know what tyres he would like to use at the next pit stop. He can also indicate the state of his current tyres by setting the board computer for each tyre compound. The clutch settings are pre-programmed. This applies for example to the start procedure. Is it wet, dry or is the driver starting on the dirty side of the track? There are different settings for each of these things. Through the dual clutch system you hold both flippers pressed. The lights go out and you release one immediately. At that moment you're already on the bike point and you only have one second to let go. Charge. This determines the power of the electric motor. Turn it back to charge the battery and set the option to the most aggressive setting and the electric motor will work at full speed. Mode. This is for the engine mode. In qualifying this is crucial but also when there are engine problems in the race we often see that drivers have to use this option to reset the engine. The pit lane speed is different for each circuit. This is mapped by the team on each track and ensures the drivers are driving at the correct speed in the pit lane. Fail one fail. How many times have we heard that onboard radio from the engineers at Red Bull Racing? The fail button causes all systems to go into fail or save mode. With the plus one button the drivers can go through the systems of the car. On the left and right ends of the handlebars there are two rotating features. This allows the drivers to determine the amount of torque from the engine and to open or close the differential. The differential can also be seen changing a lot in qualifying at each corner for some drivers. Also on the handles there are rotators on both sides. These are multifunctional but are mainly used to set the least used options. The end button puts the car back into neutral when the drivers enter the pit or has to move the car along the track. However in some cars this can also be done by pressing both shifters at the same time. At this point you're probably wondering where the start button is for the RB16, but it doesn't actually exist. Most Formula 1 cars don't have a normal starter motor, but for now we'll save the technical explanation for another time. Did you like this video? Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video.